Hey guys, it's Paul, combat veteran, MMA fighter, YouTuber. Today, we are going to be checking out a hugely fan requested video of uh, Astartes. Uh, this is a fan film from the Warhammer 40k universe, and it uh, is by all accounts awesome. But before we get started, of course, if you too dream of being a space marine, but know in your heart you would more likely just be a guardsman, hit subscribe. This is a new channel, and I need all the subscribers I can get. And of course, hit like on the video so that I know, that the YouTube algorithm knows that I am making quality content. All right, now that we've done that, let's check out Astartes Part 1. All right, so it looks like they are getting ready for a planetary drop. Now, I'm not super tied into Warhammer 40K's tactics, but there's a fun fact. One of the first uh, instances in sci-fi of the idea of orbital drop shock troops, and actually one of the first instances of uh, the armor, power-armored space marine concept was in Robert Heinlein's book, Starship Troopers, right, of course, Starship Troopers. And in Starship Troopers, of course, follows the career of a young enlisted soldier who later becomes an officer as he enters what in um, Starship Troopers universe is called the Mobile Infantry. But in practical terms, the Mobile Infantry look a lot more like maybe StarCraft's Terran Space Marines, um, where they are regular human beings, um, but extensively trained and equipped with powerful power armor. And of course, they that they drop into onto contested planets from orbit right the classic like orbit orbital drop being just like a traumatic frightening experience as you fall through the atmosphere right so that's sort of the uh his historiography if you will of the uh, orbital drop space marine as a concept Okay, dropping through an asteroid field seems sort of insane. Um, as I've learned, Warhammer 40k, just because something is needlessly and insanely risky doesn't mean it won't happen here in this universe. Um, but again, for every asteroid you can see, I would assume that there's a lot of very small particles that you can't, that are just like little bullets flying around with no air resistance. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're getting our answer a little bit. Those um, those uh, little escort vehicles, escort drones, are seem to be blasting down um, potentially dangerous uh, rocks. Okay, I was totally wrong. Totally had that mischaracterized. It was not an orbital drop. It was uh, boarding, right? And boarding is a tactical procedure that dates basically as far back as there's been naval warfare, um, where you send your troops and your sailors to board the enemy ships. Uh, actually, in ancient Greece, one of the first places that we know of boarding, uh, uh, boarding naval boarding tactics happened, um, the 
ships would literally have these sailors rowing them. They would row up to each other and they would hook onto one another with a plank. And you would hook onto the enemy ship and then your troops would cross uh, onto their ship via the plank. And you would have effectively naval warfare was back then was just ground warfare on ships um, and it sort of seems like again I'm sure in this in the Warhammer 40k universe there's also naval battles but in this instance we seem to be looking at a classic shipboarding process Okay, so again, the firefight inside a ship. One, you've breached the hull, but of course if you're an Astartes, it looks like they have uh, power armor, which I'm almost certain is also a pressurized environment suit. So no worries that their boarding craft has just penetrated, uh, tore a huge hole in their target vessel. Um, you know, again, uh, tactically, I wonder if they're going for a specific object or trying to capture a specific person um, because, again... You only want to do these boarding procedures, right? They must want to either seize the ship or seize something on the ship without destroying it. Otherwise, of course, they would just bomb the ship into oblivion. So I'm, I'm curious to see how that plays out. I don't even know who that dude is. If, if you guys can enlighten me over who this person is and what this faction is, I imagine they're humans. Usually Astarte, Astartes and Space Marines will only fight uh, humans aligned with chaos. But yeah, if you can help me out who this dude is, uh, I'm, I'm pretty clueless. Yeah, it's always pretty funny to see the Astartes just not caring at all. Their idea of room clearing seems to be just entering, killing everything in the room, and moving on. Not wanting to uh, slowly or deliberately um, <laughs> to do anything. Uh, this is so. What you see sometimes, right, and I suspect that might be what we're watching here, is what's tactically called a raid. So an attack is usually when you advance into an objective, seize the objective, and hold it, right? In contrast, a raid is entering an objective, achieving some set goal, whether it's uh, killing a person, more likely like destroying a valuable, let's say a weapons depot, and then withdrawing quickly. But usually it's done by a force that is somewhat smaller, that can't hold the objective against enemy reinforcements, but relies on speed and violence of action to enter, achieve their objective, and withdraw. And so I, perhaps this is what the Space Marines are doing in because they seem to be moving very like violently through their objective, and they are not doing the usual move of taking your time, very deliberately clearing through every part of the ship. Right? They're pushing really hard for their, towards some sort of objective, some sort of goal. Right, you can see that the gunner there uh, definitely used classic ambush tactics, right? Found a area where they would have a great broadside view of the Astartes. They knew that they were going to pass through that, what's called the kill zone. And 
in good ambush pro procedures, they waited until the main force had entered the kill zone, right? There were, it looks like the most of the column of the Space Marines were in that kill zone when he opened fire. And this is a pretty classic uh, t timing for an ambush. And you notice he started with the forwardmost Marine and worked his way back through the line. That, of course, in, you know, in, in when you have these uh, constrained environments when you're in a narrow hallway, right? If yet first Space Marine went down, he may actually block the hallway and keep his buddies from being able to get out of the kill zone. So again, a, a tactically a good plan, um, but again, he appears to be on his own and it's pretty hard to uh, achieve any good effects from an ambush when you're just a, a one or two person team against say a squad or a numerically superior force. Point out their lighting effects in the hallways. Whoever animated this is really good. Uh, those lighting effects are really cool. Yeah, there's those super cool lighting effects again. They they they, they really are. I mean, I can see why uh, this animator got picked up by Games Workshop's proper. He, he's really doing uh, some of the effects on just like another level. Even here, look, you can see how the screen is glowing green and reflecting off the face of the operator. All right, uh, so I'm all right. I'm I'm gonna weigh in. I understand that in the Warhammer 40k universe, life has no meaningful value, but I'm just gonna say that if you are retreating down a hallway, right, you want to make sure that you do a bounding retreat so that there's always an element who can return fire on an enemy. Otherwise, exactly what happened will happen, which is the enemy comes upon you. They see a, a sea of your backs and you're a soft target for them to hit whenever they want. Um, normally you will bound, someone will be covering as the other person moves back, right? Or some group, it'll be like a group A and group B, and the group that's in place will be putting down covering fire. Even if they don't kill the enemy, they will force the enemy to stop, take cover, or at least stop and shoot back, giving their buddies a chance to bound backwards. Once their buddies have bound backwards, they will set, they will take over the duties of shooting, and their friends will bound all the way back. Of course, if you have no value and are willing to buzzsaw your own troops, as we saw here, um, you know, you, you can do that like leading your forces into an ambush, but honestly, even if your goal was not to kill your troops, the danger of these kind of like hit the enemy, lure them into an ambush and then hit them is just so dangerous, right? Because as you can see, that artillery piece was ready to fire and just your timing is off or you just don't care or you're so hyped up, you shoot the first thing you see, but usually the first thing you see is your friends. Again, pretty cool effect, the way the round sort of parted the smoke. Um, just, again, an animator that really loves getting the effects right. Again, really want to know who these guys are. Not any faction that I'm super familiar with. Though again, I imagine probably some chaos-aligned force. Ah, did you 
see that? The Space Marines no fire and maneuver. One of their buddies was firing. The other one moved, set, and his buddy got to maneuver while he took over firing duties. Again, really curious. You see the size of these bolter rounds. Um, they're 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 big. They look like you know like Easter eggs almost. Um, but the bolters themselves are small and their magazines are small. So not sure how what sort of magic magic is at work here that you can keep you know thirty Easter egg size rounds in a pistol that's only yay big. I was about to ask where his friends were. Uh, I'm having my question answered here. Because uh, it seems like, based on sort of their strategy, where they're putting rounds onto the target, um, it seems like they, it requires the enemy's concentration to maintain that energy shield, um, allowing another Astartes to attempt to attack in melee, which, of course, as you all know, is actually a sort of Warhammer Warhammerized version of of the real military tactic of a uh, flanking maneuver, right? Where you establish a base of fire that draws your enemy's attention, gets your enemy's head down, and meanwhile, your other element flanks around to the side and then engages the enemy from an unexpected direction where their cover is poor um, and they aren't able to protect themselves, right? So again, a real version of this, uh, usually though, luckily your enemies don't have psychic shielding. You know, it comes down to just breaking concentration, I guess. Um, but like we discussed, flanking maneuver works works on everybody, even psychic augmented humans or whatever these are. Please, please do tell me what what I'm looking at here. What these guys are, were, were. All right, guys, that is just about halfway. Let's pause it there, and we'll pick this up in the next episode. Okay, what are my thoughts on Astartes? Uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, this animator is definitely on another level. Um, really curious to find out what the what the Space Marines are going for here in this ship. Clearly, they are targeting something um, that they want to, again, as we discussed in a raid, enter acquire or achieve an objective and extract um but we saw some real military tactics at work we saw the flanking maneuver uh we saw fire and maneuver of course by the space marines and we saw some pretty uh ineffective fire and maneuver by the uh, enemy force who also sort of curious again i assume chaos chaos and Imperial Guardsmen, maybe? I, I, I really I really don't know. Um, but do, do let me know in the comments what I'm looking at. But again, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this content, hit the like button. And of course, subscribe to the channel to see me do the other episode or the other half of Astartes. And until next time, I will see you guys 